Ask me questions. Mm, 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 mm. Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Alex and this is Emma. Hello. We are in lockdown here in the UK. However, we are allowed to leave the house to get a little bit of exercise. And luckily, we're living in the countryside, so we have plenty of walks nearby. And we thought we'd take you along with us today. We asked on social media if you've got any questions for us. And today is the time for some lovely lazy content. That's right, it's a Q&A. Before we get to the more fun stuff, we thought we'd group the COVID questions because there's a few of them. Yeah. Get them out of the way. Get them out of the way early. <laughs> get out your system. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the first COVID okay, question? Okay, the first COVID question is from WBS Signs that says, How are you really coping? I feel like that's a very loaded question. There that is. really coping. Because you have to tell the truth. Yeah, you're not getting it's any more words from me today. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, there have been plenty since this pandemic started. Last week, we only made one video. We plan to make loads. We want to make loads, but it does rely on both of us being in the right mood. And with everything going on, it's not ideal. It's really difficult. Like, for example, the last couple of days I've been especially struggling. Um, I've just felt really like not doing anything, to be honest. I've took a, I took a couple of days off teaching, so I haven't been working the last two days, and I've just been kind of taking time to chill, been watching a lot of Disney Channel. Would you call it moping? Moping, perhaps I have been moping. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes it's the right to mope. I think one of my biggest problems um, that I figured out, um, thanks to my counsellor, was that I would always put myself down for feeling bad. And actually, it's all right to feel bad sometimes, guys. And I can relate to that because I'm pretty much usually in quite a good mood. But with everything going on, it's more of a, just a constant guilty feeling. Yeah. And then when we don't make a video, we feel guilty. That's it. It's like just... you should be doing something. Yeah. And don't be fooled by social media. All these people saying how well they're doing, doing yoga every day and painting and learning Mozart and all this kind of stuff. It's not really happening. Most normal people, they're just slobbing around in their PJs doing bugger all. And it's okay. <laughs> learning Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> so, in conclusion, average at best. Yeah, average at best. We definitely have co some coping me mechanisms that we're using. Like I have been doing yoga, I'm laughing about it, but I have been doing it and it's been helping a lot. But on the days where I really don't feel like doing it, I just don't do it. So all in all, basically we're not winning the quarantine. No, no, we're, we're getting <laughs> treading by. Water. We're treading water. <laughs> Our next question is from Ger Geradict, I think. Um, Geradict. <laughs> Geradict. With all the C19 lockdown, you will have to stay in one place for long, right? How does it feel? And he ends it with, you never walk alone. So he's obviously a fellow Liverpool fan. Hello. Uh, that's actually a very easy question to answer. Yeah. Um, of course, like we're impacted, but it's just the most first world problems like it didn't take long for us to just be like it's not that important yeah no. of course we want to be traveling that's what we do and basically how we make a lot of our money and some of our money <laughs> we don't make much <laughs> <laughs> illusion <laughs> but yeah at the end of the day travel's a luxury and we're more than happy to stay at home and not spread the virus around really yeah. that's the most important thing so honestly we've sort of taken that bit in our stride we don't really mind too much Next up is Kara and she's asked us, what are we doing for mental health during these difficult times? And I guess like a lot of these answers are kind of going to merge together a little bit in that like, yeah, we've kind of, we're allowing ourselves to feel rubbish. I think that's important to be honest, but also don't dwell on it so much. I think it's really important to allow yourself to feel what you want to feel, but at the same time, you don't want to cultivate more of those crappy feeling so it is important to try and get yourself out of it if possible i found just doing stuff that distracts me quite useful so paint by numbers bloody love a paint by numbers i've been doing that recently it's really nice just to mindlessly do something yeah but also don't take any of this as like some authority oh, that we're God. killing it no. like we're just doing what we're doing to try and keep ourselves yeah. sane happy all those things mm. like do what works for you just keep trying, trial and error. Yeah. Just keep doing it until it's working. And don't put too much expectation on yourself. I think like, you know, it's so easy in this time to be like, okay, I can be mega productive and get ahead, whatever. But like, you also don't have to be, you can just chill. Like that's what most people are doing at this time anyway. But going out for little walks in nature, nature helps, walking around helps, and doing a bit of yoga and clearing the mind has helped me so far. But it's definitely not been the, the 
cure all pill for everything. I actually think I need to start doing some working out my arms. <laughs> you don't understand how painful it is to hold a camera up for this long. <laughs> We're not used to this. And the last question of the COVID series of Q and A's <laughs> is Sharon. She is asking us, Emma was sick recently. Is it possible that she had COVID-19? And when we say recently, I think it was beginning of February. It was before my birthday, our birthdays. Um, and we were both sick, actually. We I was sick first, so can I have some <laughs> kind of... Sympathy. Sympathy or something. I, I was sick first. He was very sick. And then Emma was sick. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I think it was just really bad flu. Uh, we didn't have all the respiratory symptoms that seem to be so common with the coronavirus. So, But it I was mean, the most sick we've ever been. It was and really bad. Who knows? Yeah. It's more fun to just say maybe who knows. Yeah. I, to be honest, like we probably didn't have it. If we did, I guess that's a good thing and that hopefully we'd be immune to it now but who knows um, but we're happy and healthy now and that's what counts but that's enough for this hopefully the next set of questions will be more fun a bit more exciting but first a little bit more walking i think there is one more kind of quarantine related question and that is from digital nomad girl louise she has asked us what our best couples in quarantine tip is perhaps the best thing i can suggest is have your separate hobbies in separate rooms, if possible, and have a break from each other every now and again. Um, Alex and I are very used to doing this because we travel and work together all the time anyway, so we're pretty good at like knowing when we need our own space and going our separate ways. But, I mean, we're not experts in that either, Louise. We, we haven't got a clue what's going on. We, we have our fair share of arguments, don't we, Al? <laughs> uh, usually your fault. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Emma? Yes. Madged World is asking, why beans? Why beans? I mean, I'll give you the short answer. Basically, Alex and I, when we met eight years ago in Thailand, we had a few too many drinks and we had a very drunken, silly conversation about beans, all the different beans in the world, runner beans, green beans, black beans, kidney beans. Human beans. <sighs> Human beans. And really, that's kind of where it started. I don't really know how we bridge the gap between having a strunk conversation and deciding to create our entire channel <laughs> and name life around and brand it. <laughs> around that conversation. But there you go. It's a tedious link, but it's a link. Hit me with another one. Okay, we've got Diane. Diane. She says, while you wait, where do you yearn to go? Oh, Diane. Um, let me think. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not yearning to go anywhere. I'm quite happy being where we are in jolly old England. It doesn't bother me. Um, for someone who travels a lot, I, I'm quite comfortable and quite happy just to stay at home for a while. And although I make videos on YouTube about my life, I'm actually quite an introverted person. So yeah, me time is absolutely fine for me. Um, I think if I was to choose anywhere to go, it would have to be somewhere warm with a beach because it's been a while since I've had that. So perhaps, I don't know, Philippines or Thailand or something. That would be quite nice. Somewhere it? new, South America. Oh, South America could be good. Yeah, like Brazil. I've heard those Brazilian beaches are quite nice. And I've heard those Brazilian beaches are quite nice. <laughs> okay, now it's my turn to ask you questions. Hello. <laughs> Her question is from Frank and Alicia. What equipment do you use? We have, we have so much equipment actually. A but lot of what I actually use, use <laughs> is the, I really am just not into technology that much. I have to think and looking at the camera as you speak. We've got a Panasonic G9. Love it, it's awesome. Uh, also have a GoPro, don't really use it. Have a drone, rarely use it. Uh, <laughs> and then have laptops that can edit. It takes ages to search to which ones you have. I don't know which one we have. Um, we spent a fortune on it, uh, edits I perfectly. It's, it's Microsoft Surface, Surface Book 2. Book something, yeah. <laughs> and also they ask, um, how do you plan your shooting day? Storyboards or do you just wing it? What well, do you think guys, judging on this video? <laughs> <laughs> it's a mix of like a couple actually sometimes we just wing it but to be fair the last couple of years we have kind of storyboarded it when we storyboard it it's just we know how long it takes to film a video when we're in a place we might choose a couple of segments but we just kind of rely on ourselves to make an entertaining video and as we're going along we're kind of storyboarding it as well so we know what will tie into the next segment but on the most part it's winging it <laughs> Actually, they have a third question. I don't know if this is mm -hmm. allowed, but do you obey drone flying laws? As you've probably noticed from a lot of videos, we don't really include drone footage that much. 
when we first got it, I didn't really look into the laws and just would fly it. Now I actually look into the laws when I'm in a place and you can never fly it. Yeah, ignorance it's, is bliss. Yeah, so I don't fly it anymore because I know I can't. Yeah. But when I knew I possibly could, then I would. <laughs> okay, Kez won Kez. Where is the first place you will travel when the world reopens? Oh, we haven't talked about this, so... No, we haven't. I don't know. I mean, if... obviously the UK is going to be first, because I imagine that will open before our borders overseas will open. Yeah, when we're allowed to travel abroad again, because I'm imagining flights are going to be crazy expensive yeah. and a bit of a luxury when it opens, so who knows how we're going to be able to travel. But let's just pretend anything's possible. Africa. I want to go to Africa. Oh, but that's a different question almost. That's like, if there are no limits to anything and you could choose any place, where would you choose? Africa, definitely. Yeah, but Africa's got a range of budgets. Yeah. So like, we can go to North Africa. That's true, we can go to Morocco. We did want to go to Morocco. Yeah. But the dream, our number one dream is to go on safari. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the thing we want to do more than anything. There is a similar question. Oh God, I'm so out of breath already. Shortness oh. of breath. <laughs> um, we have a similar question from Bethkins, which says top three places you want to visit. So obviously, safari in Africa is one. So let's say like not Zambia. Specific, yeah, like not specific place, because there's loads of great places in Africa. Namibia. So. Oh, nice choice. I would love to see the Northern Lights. Yeah. So, yeah, Iceland or Finland or Norway, that could be up there. It's a bit pricey though, isn't it? Yeah, but she didn't put a stipulation on money. We no, have to true. be able to afford to go. That's <laughs> where we would like to go. I would like to go. And Australia, I'd like to go to Australia. Uh, again, because we went there when we first met, after about three months of meeting, we went to Australia together. Yeah, didn't film it. We lived there for a year, we weren't filming at the time. Yeah, that would be nice. So it would be really cool to go back there. We'd love to do a, like a van life series there, that would be the dream. One more similar one as well yeah. from Kadir, where would you like to yeah. be right now? Hi Kadir, I would like to be exactly where I am right now. Do you know why? Because I'm safe and I'm not spreading the virus around, as should all of you. But actually I would really like to be on a beach somewhere and as Kadir, I know you're from Turkey, I wouldn't mind a trip to Turkey, that would be quite nice. Great food, great beaches, great weather. Yeah, Turkey sounds just fine. Okay, next up is Stacy, very long-term patron and subscriber. Hi Stacy! And she says, from your travels, has there ever been a country that you would consider settling down in? Oh, that is a good question, isn't it? That's we used to say question. manly in Australia, but that was about six, seven years ago. Yeah, and really my mind's changed since then. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I'm completely honest, it's probably the most boring answer ever. Because the more I travel, the more I appreciate how amazing the UK is as a place to actually live. Like, I mean, it's great for travel as well, but as a place to live, pretty proud of our little country. I do like it here. Um, living wise, there's so many nice places that are nice to live for a period of time. We stayed in Istanbul for a while, that was nice. Um, we stayed in Bali, you know, Thailand. And those places are all nice, but I wouldn't want to settle there long term. I do like the UK. That actually leads perfectly onto the next question from Marvin. And Marvin says, is it easier to just have your base in England and then just travel for work? And it's interesting, the more we've traveled, basically that's kind of the conclusion we're slightly being led to. But we had a bit of a spanner in the works with this. Oh. So this is the first time we're going to tell you this story. Travel Beans exclusive! <laughs> in January, we decided... Let's stop walking back, you're going to okay. fall over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in January, we decided we were going to do exactly that. We were going to get a base for six months, try it out in the UK and travel out of here and see if that worked. Uh, we basically went to go and see an apartment in Brighton. Uh, we met the people there, we signed a contract, paid the money, Turns out it was a scam. We actually got fully scammed at the start of the year. We had a terrible start to the year, actually. The this police was about the didn't even believe Jan. us at first, did they? They didn't think it was a scam. Because they were, like... they were think everything is legitimate here. This isn't a scam. We then decided it was a bit of a sign, actually, that we probably shouldn't because mm. we did lose a lot of money at the time. Eventually, out of the blue, about a month later, our money got refunded. That's we had a police how report. We, were. we got so scammed <laughs> that we got our money back. So, in conclusion to this, I'm not really sure what the future has in store for us. Uh, we do like the idea of a base in the UK, but we still feel that we're not just there yet. Mm. I think we've got a couple of years, maybe, before we go and do that. But it's definitely on the cards at some point. So, next up is from Frank, and he says, um, If Alex could only eat one thing for the rest of his life, what would it be? 
Why would it be? That's a really good question. <sighs> I think I know the answer more I than, know than, what, than you what, know it. What? Sausage sandwich? Sausage sandwiches! <laughs> I Definitely. Love. It's your go to food. I do love a sausage sandwich. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's why I'm so harsh on the American's hot dog. I know it's not a sausage. I know, I know. It. <laughs> Technically, in America, it's not a sausage, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> when you were teenagers, what did you expect to be doing as adults? Ooh. I'll, I'll answer first and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. When I was a teenager, I really wanted to travel. That was my plan, was to travel after I was going to go to university. And I wanted to work for the BBC. Uh, I actually had an interview for the BBC just before I went travelling and I remember saying to my parents I don't want to get offered this job because that will be me for the rest of my life and I couldn't really turn it down. Luckily, didn't get it. <laughs> so I was able to travel but I wanted to basically make videos and travel and surprisingly the life has allowed us to kind of do those two things. But I think it's very different for you. Is it? Oh yeah, actually, th I haven't really thought about this for a really long time, but my plan was always, when I finished university, was to travel for like a year, maybe two, um, and then go back and finish my masters. So I have my Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and I always plan to go back, do my masters, and get a job as a counsellor. But actually, I loved travelling so much that the thought of coming back was just awful. So we ended up staying out for a lot longer than anticipated. And to be honest, time just happened. And I found myself less and less interested in psychology and more and more in filming and travel and things like that. So, yeah. Okay, Al, I have a question here from Reese's Sings. What is your favourite cider? As a Somerset boy, tell I mean, us. Yeah, Thatcher's, it's, it's easy. <laughs> any it's particular easy. Thatcher's or just any Thatcher's? Thatcher's gold, it's a classic. A gold, nice. And this one comes from Tom. He says, does Al agree that the sensible resolution to the Premier League is to just give it to Arsenal? <laughs> uh, yeah, not, a lot of people watching won't care so much about football, soccer. It's a big deal for little old Al. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting 30 years, well, basically my whole life, for Liverpool to win the league, my team. They were gonna do it, they've raced ahead, the best ever in history of the Football Premier League. And then this has happened and we don't know what's gonna happen. Two games away, I, weren't uh, they? There were two wins away from winning the league. I, and I, this happened. I don't know. I, it's too sad for it you too to sad. talk about. It's too really sad, it's too sad. We don't mention football in our house anymore. <laughs> and also from Zera1405, where is somewhere that you would go again and again and again? That's three oh. agains. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. I mean, I've been to a few places again and again and again. Uh, I've been to Thailand, yeah, maybe Special ten times. Uh, to Japan, Tokyo, nice. love that. Yeah. I, I think one at the moment, my favourite in the last couple of years is uh, Istanbul. Nice. Loved Istanbul. I think I would go there again and again. Uh, Venice, you've been to again and again and again. And Venice as well. I do like that. I don't, there's so many good places. I want to go to Poland again and again. It's really hard with the travel and the YouTube specifically. We want to go to new places a lot, but we also love going to old places. Mm. And uh, this is the constant battle. Okay, next up is from Jack. He says, random question, have you been to Strasbourg? No. John asks, how did you find the cost of living um, from the US compared to England, UK? Hmm, that is a good question, actually. Um, well, it depends where in the US. New York was bloody expensive. It's all the um, secret prices added on, on top, though. Yeah, definitely. Like, for us, you know, like, tax and all that kind of stuff is all included in the final price. What you see on the bill is how much you pay. Um, so that was always a bit tricky to get used to. You know, if you order something in a restaurant, you also have the tip to think about, um, which we don't really have to think about so much in the UK. And then if you do tip, it's like... 10% max <laughs> it's not that much so yeah I mean those little things make it feel more expensive whether it actually is or not mm. but we did spend a lot less than I thought we would in the camper van series in the US mainly because fuel is so much cheaper out there you guys you do not appreciate how much cheaper your fuel is than ours if we were driving those kind of distances here around the UK well firstly we wouldn't we'd be in the ocean but secondly the fuel is just too expensive Heather asks, what do you think has changed the most about you since you started the journey? Oh, that's a deep question, Heather. Um, let me think. I mean, this sounds kind of soppy, <laughs> but actually I think that I have learnt to appreciate life a lot more since starting all of this. Um, I think it's very easy when you're at home, you know, stuck in 
a normal job, um, living your normal life. You're sort of you're so preoccupied with society and what you should be doing and what the next steps are. Um, when you travel, I guess you do kind of step back a bit from your normal environment at home, and it does help you sort of reflect on things a bit more. That, as well as like going through depression, that kind of stuff, I'm sure it's all helped to give me a bit of perspective on my life. I think it's made me a happier and better person from it. For me, I think I've just been able to now be very happy wherever I am. Just, mm. I'm quite content a little bit lazy at heart anyway but content wherever I am and I kind of lost this slight like immature outlook I had on the UK and by the UK I mean just like my home it was just I always put it down I always thought it was rubbish I was always looking for something else and the more I travel the more I appreciate home I still want to travel all the time but like I definitely feel I've lost that like disdain that I had this <laughs> unnecessary disdain and I can see it through a much more clear perspective yeah a bit of more appreciation for our hometowns mm -hmm. definitely what a lovely way to round this up and end that with some nice appreciation. Yeah, thanks Heather. Sorry we couldn't get round to everyone's questions today. There were quite a few of them, but we are debating doing a live stream. I know we talk about it. There's been rumours for years, but we never do them. <laughs> <laughs> we got no excuse. To be honest, I get a bit nervous doing live streams. I'm a bit scared. It's actually not good for our mental health, especially <laughs> yours. You get a bit worked up and it's just not a good place. But I don't like to commit. Let's That's do it. the thing. Yeah, we should do it. And maybe, maybe it'll be a bit of a last minute thing so we don't because the trouble is if I have it planned then I'll be thinking about it all week so maybe it'll just be a spontaneous one so follow us on Instagram otherwise you won't know about it because or it will Facebook. be we'll put it on Facebook as well yeah Facebook and Instagram um, so make sure you follow us on those we'll put a link in the description below and you can be kept up to date if you like the video give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to leave us a comment are there more questions you need to know do you want more detail on some of the ones we've already answered <laughs> let us know in the comments and as usual nothing left to say thank you very much for watching we'll see you next time and beans stay in <laughs>